and gentlemen, welcome back to After Hour Comedy Declassified, the podcast, I guess. It's, it's Declassified. And joining us again, we have Larocco from Camarilla Cafe. Larocco, what's going on? Nothing much, man. Just uh, just here making a whole bunch of content with you guys, and I can't wait to see a couple of new videos right now. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot. So tonight, I'm going to take you uh, on, a, on a trip. It's going to be a little bit of a, a journey. We're going to be talking about, uh, let me just see if I can do a rundown of this. Glitches in time. Okay. So okay. glitches in time, like that whole concept where some people believe that we are living in a matrix, uh, that kind of thing. Like there is a higher power that is running this program. Uh, we have glitches in time. We're going to be talking about werewolves. We also have more ghosts. And uh, there is also, I think there's one other thing in here. Um, let me see. I think that's, uh, there's something in here I'm forgetting. I forget what it is. So, but ghost glitches in time, werewolves, and there's another one for the life of me. I can't even think of right now, uh, mm -hmm. but, but we're going to dive down all of it. So I guess the first thing we're going to kind of talk about and that I have video footage of is glitches in time. So as far as this, Loraco, where do you stand on just the world? Are we living in a, a simulation? <sighs> It depends on how you, I think it depends on how you define simulation. Right. So, I mean, of course, of course, simulation can apply, right? Because simulation could be numerous things. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a digital existence. Um, because even if you, if you base it off of like, let's say the matrix, that would be us enslaved by the robots and we're living in like a virtual reality. Right. That's like computer generated. Whereas even if you think from the spiritual sense if God is an energy or a being, theoretically, we're experiencing something as a soul in another body, right. in, a, in a different existence for a small amount of time and then back. So whichever way you look at it, really, you can, you can translate it to some type of, some type of simulation. And it just I, depends on, on what angle. You yeah. Know? And I think the question is, what's that higher power? Because I think that makes a difference, right? Like, are we oh, yeah. physically in a computer, like an actual computer program at that point? Who's running the program? Or are we talking about simulation? Like, is it aliens that are using us like an ant farm? I, I think the higher power is kind of what dictates that, that simulation. Um, yes. Well, the higher power and definitely the intelligence factor. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're aware of like our names, um, we wonder about our purpose, you know, like there, there are a lot of different types of life forms that just go through life just doing what they do, right? They, they're like they're automated, almost like an NPC. You know, like if you look at ants, or I mean, we can't, we don't know if they're thinking something or feeling something, but they certainly just look like they're running the motions. Right. And they've done the same thing for thousands of years. We're a little different in the fact that we ponder things. So, so we're aware of ourselves, we're aware of our surroundings and we constantly hypothesize, you know, what else it could be, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Now we're going to take it a step further. I have some video evidence of glitches in time. Now, this is kind of also going to could be that higher power, uh, oh, but it also could be now we're talking dimensions like are certain beings present in multiple dimensions, right? Um, mm -hmm. we started to talk about this a little bit. It was either in the interview I did on your show. Uh, we definitely talked about it a little bit with ghosts, but like if I'm present in two dimensions, there could be a dimension where I look like a residual haunting or a ghost in one dimension. Like I don't respond because I'm doing the same exact thing in a real dimension that I'm right. in, that I'm acknowledging and, and interacting physically with the world. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I present that to you to now present this to you. We're going to take a look at a dog. This is going to be a dog in a hallway. So the owner comes home and the dog is completely frozen in time. Now, it's not one of those videos where he's just sitting here and the dog's frozen. He is going to walk down the hallway, walk up to the dog, and that dog is completely frozen. So kind of with this, let me go to our full screen, Loraco, so you can take a good look at this. Um, frozen in time, man. Here we go. So the owner comes home, sees the dog. That dog's not moving, Morocco, at all. Starts to get a little closer to the dog. Still nothing. 
And now I think somewhere around here, the dog just snaps out of it. See, now the dog starts to move its tail a little bit. Wow. <laughs> and then the dog starts to move kind of once he starts, you know, petting it, kind of waking it up from whatever. Um, now I'm going to just automatically jump right to it. Okay. Maybe a very, very well-trained dog, but there's a lot going on there, right? Like we're not seeing any breathing. We're not seeing kind of any kind of flinching, like even well-trained dogs have to fight that urge to, to, to not break their training. Right. Yeah. It didn't even move. Right. Now let me go back and, and I'll kind of play it with no audio and we can break it down. Um, but even, even as this guy's walking up, like completely still mm -hmm. to the point where it almost looks like it's stuffed it's bizarre that's certainly bizarre yeah 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 and, and there is one point kind of towards the end where uh where the dog starts to move its tail a little bit and then the owner touches him and then he kind of starts moving but even like right here that's that's literally motionless yeah no head tilt the, nothing the the tail isn't going absolutely anywhere. Yeah. And like right here, it's, well, now the tail started rising. It started right there. to, yeah, it started to move. And then the dog it's, it's almost, and it's not even like the dog jumped. Like when that dog lifted its back legs, look, the dog slowly, almost like it has to get back into gear kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know, man. What do you think about this one? Initial, <laughs> initial takes on it. Yeah, that's a little strange. I mean, I, I don't know if it's frozen in time. You know, they were one, once or twice I saw um, the dogs that I've had in my life. Like, I'd be walking the dog and then it goes into hunting mode. Have you ever seen a dog in hunting mode? Because it's kind of funny. Um, a Apart from just like Discovery Channel, and I'm not even sure if that's what you're talking about. Like the hair stands on the back yes. and it starts okay. going yeah. really slowly. They get the little mohawk. Yes, but it, but it starts slowing down. Almost like a moving statue. Okay. So I am aware that, not that dogs do this all the time, but the dogs can do something similar to it. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I, and, and I'm, and I'm the, I, like I said, I'm the first one to throw out there, you know, like a very, like a Hollywood trained dog, maybe. But how often? I mean, that, that's this guy's dog, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That, that's his dog. He comes home and he sees this. So the dog should have been excited. Or, or something. Yeah. Like not terrified, not scared. Yeah. Well, and there, there was like no audible breathing. There was nothing. It, it was, you know, it's just kind of there. So I guess in this, some people are saying that, well, it's a glitch in the matrix, right? Or mm -hmm. some people are saying, well, maybe that dog was in a different dimension right there. And what you're catching is, you know, it was, it was fully functional in a, uh, in another dimension. So what, like mentally or, or body wise, everything mentally, spiritually, whatever, like. Because if it was in another dimension, it would, you would observe it more like a ghost, I would think. Maybe, or, or let's say maybe the spirit left, so that's why it's stuck there. And then once it comes back or whatever, it's, it's awareness comes back to our dimension. Then it goes back and it, you know. Yeah, I mean. There's, there's a lot. Nearly impossible to kind of debunk on this one. It's definitely awkward yeah. that it's, that it's standing like that and frozen. Right. Well, I'm going to kick it up a notch. Well, go ahead. What'd you have? Okay. No, 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 no. I, I was just going to say, I, you know, other than the once or twice that I've seen my dogs act like that, I mean, they still weren't like that. They yeah. still weren't absolutely frozen. And I just know that they have the ability to actually kind of do that if they get pensive or if they start concentrating on something. It could be in shock for whatever reason, too. Um, I'm going to kick it up a notch, though. Frozen mm -hmm. in time. We're still on that topic of frozen in time. Right. But now, when when you're watching the skies um, as you drive around, what are you looking for specifically? I'm just curious. You personally. What am I looking for? Like just UFOs or are we looking for any kind of anomalies or what? Well, I generally look at the sky because I like the stars and stuff like that. Like I always wonder what that is, right? Okay. You look at a lot of conspiracy theories and nobody really... Anyone who deny... Not even like there are some people, I'll call them round earthers that believe that what we're looking out there is not what we're told regardless of whether the earth is flat or not. Right. Like some people do believe it's an actual projection. So I, I don't know. You just look for anything moving around because you never know what it is. 
Gotcha. That's And that's right along the lines of what I'm going to break down. So glitches in time, frozen in time. This was a dog. Let me show you a pigeon that's frozen in the air. So this one what? comes. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good one. So this one comes in. And this little white dot that you're seeing right here, and I'm going to make it full screen. This little white dot right here that you're seeing is a pigeon. Now, let me play that video. All right. So you're going to see a lot of people kind of gathered around. And they're literally looking up at the sky like, okay. And I, I might even be able to make that a little bit bigger for you. Yeah. Look, all those people are gathered around. And then they're looking up at the, the pigeon. Okay, so yeah, if we kind of look at it here, Loraco, so that bird, it's up in the sky. It's suspended. Yeah. That's really bizarre. Okay, yeah. This is now not... we're starting to hit the bizarre land. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but here here's the crazy thing. This is not an isolated incident. Like if you actually go even just on YouTube and look up bird frozen in the sky, you're going to mm -hmm. see pigeons, crows, all kinds of stuff. This is not an isolated incident. This happens all the time. Okay? And it's kind of there. Right? Now, I, and I, I'm going to go some theories. So it's not uncommon when you have bigger spiders in other countries. Birds can get caught in spider webs. Um, but as it zooms in kind of right up here, I'm not really seeing any spider webs. Right? And it goes in even closer. And now here's something that you're going to notice the next time. They yeah, but how big would that web have to be? It, uh, now we're talking like camel spiders and, not, and, you know, the big the big bird eater kind of thing. Bird eaters, the tarantulas. Yep. Um, but you're going to notice here, the other thing that I want to kind of point out, as they zoom in, you're going to see the feathers blow in the wind. Like it's it's genuinely just stuck there, like frozen. So I don't know, initial takes on this one, Morocco. I have no clue what to think of that. Because it's suspended in air. Yeah. I, I, it's not flapping its wings. It doesn't look like it's on top of anything. It doesn't look like it's stuck to anything. And even if that were a web, look at the distance. T take into consideration the distance that that web would have to be. Right. Right. Look it, at that. What's, what's the web attached to? It may be between the tree and over there, but... That's a distance. And th here's the other thing, right? Everyone here is looking at it. So it's not like it's not being acknowledged when we talk about CGI and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Even people driving by are just, they're, they're looking at it. Um, but again, not an isolated incident. So you could look this up on any platform and you're going to see numerous videos and accounts of birds just being stuck in the air. Um, so That's weird. Yep. It, it's a thing. Glitch in time or, or I don't know what, but I don't know, man. I don't know. So what do you think about that? C combined with the dog now. I don't have an answer to this one. Yeah. The dog one, like I said, I have a hypothesis because I've seen my own animals act like that. Not not like that. I'm, I'm going to keep reiterating that. Yes. Not exactly like the way that thing was frozen, but I've seen them go into that that hunting mode. So so they do they do have a way of being able to kind of statue themselves. But no, this is absolutely. I don't know, unless that's completely staged by everybody that's out there right now and it's actually like on a line Which it could between be. the two. Which I think we do need to be open to that possibility. I mean, that's defying physics. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to kick it up a notch again. Uh, All right. So I'm going to okay. kick it up one more notch. Let's take it away from a bird and let's go to a national airline that is stuck in the air. So here we're going to see people driving by and what you're Wait, looking I just lost your screen share. Oh, let me get it back for you. There we go. You should be good now. Excellent. I accidentally hit the wrong button. It, it popped down when I went to switch tabs. Actually, I should be able to move it down here and still do it. Perfect. Okay. So, sorry. What, what I was going to say was like right here where my mouse is, you are looking at this little dot. Okay. That little dot is actually uh, an airline. Like we're talking like Southwest. It might not be Southwest, but think one of those big jetliners, right? Okay. Um, I'm going to go full screen on this. So think about that dog frozen in time. Think about that bird frozen in time. 
same concept. There is nothing different here. Uh, this is still frozen in time. The plane looks like it's just hovering. It looks like a big one as well. Look at it, for real. It looks like it's just kind of hovering there. It's wild. I almost want to stop on the side of the road and see if you can... What do we think about that initially, LaRocco? <laughs> I got some good ones today, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The, the only thing we observably have, right, that, um, the only thing we observably have that does things like that are, are digital presentations, programs, and even it's based off of a digital concept. Are the only things that can literally just freeze in front of you and just get stuck because it stops loading, right? Um, well, that's the only thing observable that generally has that type of behavior. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and, and we was and we were speaking about, um, you know, one of your other uh, shows about how the other beings could be in a digital realm, right? Well, I, I'm going to throw a theory out there, which is very similar when you say other beings. What if, what if this is a UFO, because UFOs can hover in place, right? Mm -hmm. What if this is a form of cloaking from a UFO and they just didn't think it all the way through? Right? So what if some of those planes you think, we look up, oh, it's a plane. Is it? Right? It could be. Oop. That's not a bad. But would the bird be a cloak? No, I don't think. The funny I, thing is, you're observing it in multiple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think the bird was a UFO in disguise. <laughs> but, but, but that is that's odd. This is a full jetliner, uh, a full on full on airplane right here, and it's yeah, it looks kind of stuck in place. Which, like I said, a bird, I, I could see someone kind of recreating that, hanging it up on string. But this is a little bit tougher. So we started out with a dog, went to a bird. Now we're talking full on airlines. Little bit yeah, harder, and that, little bit think harder about how heavy that fucking thing is, too. Oh, for sure. Um, I don't know, and this looks pretty darn genuine. I mean, I'm looking for all the signs, and I mean, it checks a lot of boxes. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say to this one. This, yeah. this one's a lot, a lot worse than the last one. Yeah, and it slowly escalated, like I said, dog, bird, airplane. <laughs> so, yeah, no, you pushed it up a notch every single time. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. And like and like I said, the funny thing is, because you're bringing up the whole simulation theory, you know, we were talking about how other beings or other energies or whatever that is, that maybe there's the chance that we're utilizing that same energy in the things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it does make you wonder, you know, for us in our everyday life, the only thing that's generally observable is that type of stuff. Yeah. So it's digital things act like that yeah and, when they and just get stuck i'm not gonna lie the at the rate of these kind of videos that are out there the reason i asked you what you look at the sky for is i think this might change it a little bit to where you're now going to start looking for things that aren't moving that should be um mm -hmm. when i'm driving on the interstate i'm not lying to you i'm literally major well i'm looking for ufos but i'm more so looking for things that are stuck in the air like if i see a bird i automatically watch it for a little bit I, I never, I've never witnessed it personally, and I've actually never actually stumbled upon these videos. Yeah. So it, I hadn't really even thought about it, I guess. Yeah. They're, they're out now there. Now that you're showing it. <laughs> it's a real thing, man. It's a, it's a real thing, and it's not an isolated incident, too. Um, but yeah, that's just something to think about for our, for our viewers right now that's on Patreon. Odd. Oh, I didn't mean to do this, but this is the next video I was going to go to. Uh, where do you stand on werewolves? Hmm. That's a tough one. It now it's a really tough one. I, I'm going to argue. So a werewolf, 100% of cryptid. I would lean in most people's eyes a little bit more towards the fairy tale side of things. It depends. I mean, it, it, it's another one of those fairy tales that seems to have been in numerous, numerous cultures. Right. Like the dog headed man. I, I mean, it was the Egyptians, the Greeks, uh, the Romans. Um, you've had stories of it from all over the world o over the years. Uh, it seems like a very, very recurring situation. Uh, 
Yeah, it's tough to weigh in on, really. I mean, right now I would have to argue that if it did exist, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, I don't believe in the horror movie version. No, of, like, no, no. Horror movie anything. Somebody it, turns yeah. into one, right? So, Hor yeah, yeah, I don't know. Horror movie anything is wrong. That's I generally don't watch horror movies because I don't like their portrayal on ghosts and things like that. Like it's mm -hmm. when you go ghost hunting, it's going to be nothing like like The Conjuring, right? So, um, werewolves. So we on the after hour show. It was a while ago. We played a video of a diary. Oh, we watched this. Ah, uh, I think we watched this off air. Um, mm -hmm. but we played a video of the dire wolf, which it's what the dire wolf is. Is basically it's a big wolf but it's like prehistoric dinosaur size wolf. So that's a okay. little bit more believable. That would kind of lead into this. Um, and if any of our Patreon viewers want to know more about the dire wolf, I can pull that video easily. Uh, okay. So this is a guy who's live streaming on Facebook and then he hears something out in his yard and then he gets up and looks and this is all going on live during Facebook. So you, that's where you see all these, these chats <laughs> and these, and these typing and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'll go full screen. And we'll take a look at this. Now, now he's probably got the worst phone in the world, Boost Mobile. Where is that guitar note coming from? Do you hear that? The yeah. bang, I think he's listening. Bang. I think he's listening to music. Okay. I, I think he was just streaming and just listening to music. But now what he's saying, he's like, oh, there's some weird noises coming from outside. And <laughs> yeah. All right, now it's going to be kind of once he opens the door. Um, I am going to pause it, give a little bit of a spoiler alert, because I, I want you guys to know what you're kind of watching. He's going to show his backyard. You're going to see some green grass. There's lights. It's nighttime. And you're going to see something run across the screen from left to right. Okay, so that's kind of what you're looking for. Why is it blue? All right, so it's going to be in the tree line. Okay, now he's just, he's just watching. It's going to be right here. And, and he kind of freaked out. I'm going to go back one more time. I wish I had a clearer video, but this is all there is. You're going to see it run right here. What do we think about this, Larocco? Initial take. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is you know, it is being streamed on Facebook. It could be set yeah. up. It could be set up. You never know. That's a tough one. I, I I think that I mean this is obviously not as intriguing as a as a plane stuck in the sky. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, werewolves are always like that, right? Werewolves are the one where it's like, okay, even for me, that might be a little bit of a stretch. That could have been a rogue crackhead that thought they were seeing like a McDonald's wrapper floating in the wind. I, Maybe he was a wearing, fry in it. He was wearing a do rag, wasn't he? I I mean, you know, that could have been anything really. Now, is there a slowed version where you can actually kind of get a better view of the actual thing that's running or the person that's running? Okay, I'm gonna go full screen and I'm gonna try to pause it when we get to when we get. To yeah, it the... sucks too that it has that camera kind of ratio. Yeah, it's not full screen. iPhone ratio, yeah. I think it's like right about here, and it starts to run. I mean, that's... Okay, you want to know what? Now that I'm looking at this, I don't think that's in the yard. Um, Are you familiar with... Uh, uh, it's basically, if there's glass there, that could be a reflection behind him. 
Do you get? Oh. Do you see how it's transparent? Yes. It's it, it looks transparent, which makes me believe that if there is glass there, that could be someone behind him, not in the. Right. Not in the yard. Okay, I'm gonna start to lean on that side of things now. Uh, it's called I think it's called Pepper's Ghost is what it's called. Um, and it's it's the same trick that Disney uses, magicians use it, um, all of these things. It's basically when you put a piece of glass and then like a projector and then you project onto the glass. Well, you can see the right. projection on the glass and then you can also see from the inside, like from the other side, through the glass, the projection and all of that, which is the same thing that this is kind of looking like. Yeah, to me. that does look. Mm. I'm going on the side of I think that there's glass here and I think that's someone behind him. I think that's what I'm going to lead with. But you can also kind of tell from the glare of the light. That, that it, doesn't look like it's actually hitting camera glass, right? It looks like it's actually being spread in front of the gr- in, in front of the glass. That's what that's what I'm saying. I think there's a glass <clears throat> there's a glass door right here. And then that's what we're seeing. Or I would lean more than it's a ghost. It's not a werewolf. But but look up Pepper's Ghost. For any of our listeners, it's called Pepper's Ghost, and it, it's I, I do believe it's called Pepper's Ghost. Uh, but it's basically it's the same thing as, um, okay, here's this. It's starting to get dark outside, but you have lights on inside, and the inside is brighter than the outside, and someone walks behind you, and you can see them, and it looks, you know, transparent as they're they're in the window. It's either yeah, pep- it's, um, it's either Piper. Duck, duck, go, says Pepper's Ghost is an illusion technique used in theater, cinema, amusement parks, museums, television, and concerts. That's a lot of things. Yes. So Wikipedia says... It is named after the English scientist John Henry Pepper, who began popularizing the effect with a theater demonstration in 1862. This launched an international vogue for ghost-themed plays, which used this novel stage effect. Um, yep. Let me see. Carnival sideshows, it says. The appearance of ghosts. And, and literally what you do is you put up a glass window, and you're just projecting onto the window. Right. But the way you're doing it is you put up a glass window... And then it's like a reflection. So then you light up a real object that's opposite the window. And then so the people can't see the object. They just see the light reflecting off of the object onto the window. Yeah, it says um, the illusion is conveyed succinctly in the illustration top right. A large glass screen set at an angle catches a reflection from a brightly lit actor in an area hidden from the from the audience correct not noticing the glass screen the audience mistakenly perceived this reflection as a ghost figure located among the actors on the main stage Mm -hmm. the lighting of the actor in the hidden area can be gradually brightened or dimmed to make the ghost image fade in and out visibly yeah now i don't think this guy set that up that's giving him a lot of credit from what i saw but i but it can be easily recreated with the light in the house or somebody could have moved behind him exactly the light in the house and someone just walked across and he was filming out the the window there was a werewolf in his living room or shit yeah there is a werewolf and it's actually (laughs) behind him (laughs) yeah yeah so okay i like that that was a good deep dive on that and now our listeners know what pepper's ghost is and maybe you do too (laughs) pepper's i i had never heard of it before that gotcha before you mentioned it now While we're talking about ghosts, and that was a good segue, this is one where some people are saying it's a mermaid, some people are saying it's a ghost. I'm going to lean more on the side of not necessarily a ghost, um, but a manifestation, so an apparition maybe. Um, What we're looking at, this is a tunnel, uh, and in this tunnel is water, so right down here is all water. There is like a river raft ride or They're just going rafting down the water and uh, the person with the camera is going to turn behind them and you're going to see something almost surface and break the surface of the water that looks exactly like a person. You're going to see like a head, you're going to see a neck, but then it dips down under the water and it disappears. All right. So I'm going to go full screen on this one. Take a look. This one is uh, kind of crazy. All right, so right there where the arrow is pointing, you're going to see something almost surface and then just disappear. I don't know if you saw that, Loraco. It looked like something was swimming. Exactly. But it looked like a person was swimming toward it. Exactly. And now I'm going to I'm going to play it without the audio. So as you see it right here, it looks like someone's in 
They get so yep, close. Right they, there. They get so close that it looks like they're just inches away from breaking the water. Like I'm talking like real, real close, but they never do. And what I'm looking at here, it almost looks like that would be like, uh, hold on, let me get my mouse on the screen. It almost looks like this would be the hair, shoulder, shoulder. Um, but as it kind of comes up, you can tell it's going faster than the actual current of the water because it's it's gaining oh, speed. That doesn't make me feel good. Yeah. And, and, and so this was something that wasn't caught. Like no one reacts to it in the video. They noticed it after. And see how it just kind of disappears again? Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know right there, but as it comes up again, like right here, it almost looks like that's hair, almost looks like an arm, shoulders, and then it goes back down. Yeah, I don't like that. You don't like that one? Yeah, I don't like that at all. It goes up Ooh. again and goes right back down. That really looks like somebody's following. Yes. Something's following. It does. Now but it looks like a person. It, exactly. Now here's the question. Mermaid? or apparition. And I, and I can give you my theory on this. So water, I truly believe water is a recording mineral or a recording element. So, right. so it could be a ghost. Yeah. It could be someone who drowned, uh, or it could be some, you know, some kind of energy that's there and that's manifesting itself. Um, cause it's not uncommon. So a lot of people think hauntings just happen on land. There's a lot of ghost stories that come from being underwater too. You talk like scuba divers and, and all this when they go to shipwrecks. There's a lot of there's a lot of hauntings that actually happen underwater too. Ugh, so that's terrible. So you so you have that. Um, so one could be a spirit, or the other the other theory, and kind of we talked about mermaids uh, uh, on the first episode. Some people are really mm -hmm. wa wanting this to be a mermaid as well. Yeah, I don't know. I would imagine that you'd see a flipper or something like that if it's about to break, um, and you can't obviously see that far. It looks like shoulders and it looks like arms. Oh, yeah. it looks like it's in like a white shirt. Like that classic kind Ooh. of like uh I mean that one actually Japanese. that kind of slightly gave me chills on the back of my neck right there. Yeah. Like Yeah. Right. And it looks like it's common. Well, like, the other thing too, when it starts to go down, what you can see, it almost looks like a leg right there. See, like watch, when it starts to go down. Like it's stepping. You, yeah, you Oh man. Yeah, that uh. is the more I slow that down and watch it, it actually is it's giving me kind of chills on the back of my neck. It bothered me immediately. Here's here's a slower motion of it. Okay, kind of comes up. Here's where you start to see it. And then it's going to start to go down again. And then it's just gone. Well, I mean, you start to see it kind of fade away, but yeah, it's it's there, man. Oh, that's creepy. It's there. Now, how deep did you end up finding out what tunnel that is? No, this is overseas. I do believe this was like Brazil or someplace like that. Um. This is a place where they do river tours, but I don't know how deep it is. Oh. Yep. Yeah, because I was going to say, I, especially if that's like a really deep tunnel and maybe somebody at some point was trying to get out. Because it looks like it's they're drowning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it looks like. Um, but I don't know, man, what's, what's your thoughts on this one? Apart from, we both kind of equally think this one's a little creepy and I, and I don't know what's scarier is the fact that it's, it got caught on camera or the fact that it genuinely looks like it's following. It genuinely looks like a person that's coming and following and you don't see anything else anywhere else in the water. Yeah. Like it's not clear water, which is, you know, obviously making the case Ugh, against it a little chills. harder, but you're not seeing anything. That mm -hmm. stood out very, very vibrantly. And the other thing, too, is because, like you're saying, that water's so murky, the only way you're going to see it is if it gets close to the surface. Right. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't break the surface. Oh. Yeah, this one bothered me a little bit. <laughs> um, okay. Not going to lie. <laughs> That's good, man. That means we're playing some good videos. Uh, now, on the genuine side, I think this is a genuine video right here. Me, personally. Um... Yeah, I, I I would go on that. Now, now that still is not discounting that that can somehow be some type of illusion. Oh, for sure. But I don't think it was doctored. Right. I would agree with that. Um, now, on the line of ghosts, we're going to go over to some other evidence. Now, this is that's just a dude. Don't worry about that. But um, this is not evidence that is scary, kind of like some of the other footage we have shown. This, I think, is very solid 
concrete evidence. Um, now, there are some ways to recreate this, but this story in general, I find believable. I think it's good. And the evidence that they kind of capture is is kind of all here. I think this guy's going to tell the story. If he doesn't, I'll fill in the gaps. Is your house really haunted? Well, it is. I know it was a bit of a spoof last time, but it's really true. So this time, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm actually going to put a, a camera up and we're going to leave it on all night and we're going to see, see what happens, yeah? And it's this window above me, it's the window, or one of the windows, that seems to open at night time. So we're going to leave a camera up and leave it on all night and we're going to see what happens. So uh, let's go up to the bedroom. All right. And what you're going to see right here, um, let me break this down. Uh, we're kind of looking, so this is an older windowsill. So one of the ones where it's got the latch that kind of just latches on and then it opens. Uh, you're going to see some kind of pretty good evidence, in my opinion, right here. All right. Now the latch just opened on its own. And now you should see the window start to open also. I do believe. There you go. Now, the reason I really like this evidence is because it's not over the top. It's not trying to scare you. It's not a jump scare. This is the more so things when you go on an investigation, these are the kind of things that you're truly looking for. Um, so you see the latch right here. It's going to lift up, even though it's not locked, but... It lifts up, goes down, should go down, go down, slowly goes down, and then you're going to see the window kind of open up and, and open towards the outside. It's a bit bizarre. A little bit. It's a little weird. Yep. So that's, I mean, I, that's really all he captures, which is part of the reason I like this video. Like I said, not over the top, real footage. This is kind of the real stuff that you would see and. Um, also like now, once it opens here, the door or not the door, um, the, the window slams shut. So you're going to, he said that's known for that. Yeah. And like he, he predicted that window is going to open. Yeah. So the, I, he didn't share the full story, but like, this is something he'd been hearing over and over and over. And he finally decided to put a camera up there to see what was going on. Yeah. That was weird. I mean, that could be done kind of quite easily i mean it, it could the be. latch is somehow underneath it already you're just kind of controlling it from the other side and then you're just kind of drifting it out from the other side mm -hmm. it can be done what uh what floor was that on did he say uh, did second he point up and say second second floor, second floor. uh yeah if, if we talk recreating um yeah it, it could be done but for sure if nobody was on a ladder that night that's a little weird yeah. So see if it always happens, because that latch doesn't just... Yep. I would imagine it doesn't just move that way. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Well, here's the other thing, too. With the latch, it goes up, and then it slowly goes down. Right. Which mm -hmm. is which is yeah. another another key thing there, too. Um, fishing line, traditionally, would be what I would assume people would use, but that would show up in the IR um, or the night vision. So, I don't know. It's, it's here. I like this because it's so simple. And I, and I think that the simpler you get, I, I, it's either going to be really fake or it's going to be really real. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the more convincing it can be, right? Because most people go for like that, um, that outrageous kind of like, look at how incredible this is, you know, especially if they're going to go through the effort of trying to make a video that looks like it's something, right? Mm -hmm. So this didn't try. Right, 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 right. So that is, that is a little intriguing, yep. especially that he said it just always happens. And that's what got caught, you know? Yeah, and that's why he put the camera there, too. Um, so that one's not really crazy. Just wanted to share it. It's, again, declassified. I want to bring some of the more convincing evidence that I that I come across. <laughs> so uh, we've got one more to talk about. And this next one, again, the same way that the Frozen in Time, I kind of amped it up. I got a really cool video I want to show you. This one's tough to explain, all right? So we're going to go to the airport. And I pause this purposely at this spot. So we're at an airport right now. I don't know if you can identify what this is, but let me break it down. This is where if a plane was to land, where you would walk from the plane to the inside of the airport terminal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I want to play this. 
And I want to go full screen, but I'm going to break it down for you. So again, um, the right side, whoops. Okay. So the right side over here, this is going to be where the plane should be landed. And then they're going to be, you're going to see people walking to the left. This would be the airport right over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to play the video and you're going to see people walking. Pretty standard, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But watch as the camera zooms away. There's no plane. So the question is, where are all these people off boarding from or off offloading from? And they don't stop. They keep coming. But there's no plane. There's got to be an answer to that. You'd think. <laughs> you think. You'd think. There's, there's got to be an answer to that. <laughs> you don't like this one. You don't like No, it. no, no. It's not creeping me out. Not, not in that aspect, but there's so many of them. Like, there's so many people. Yeah. It, you know, it's not the traditional idea of the ghost as in, like, transparent and... No, it, it's very it's very solid. But here's what I'll say. It's also very generic. So you're seeing forms of people, but you're not necessarily seeing any real distinct features. Right. So when we go back to residual haunts, um, talking about residual haunts, remember a couple episodes I gave you that comparison. It's, it's like if I was to walk in one spot in a carpet in my house, in my living room, eventually I'm going to wear a path in that, that carpet. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Think about how many different people travel an airport on day to day. You have high energies, like angry. You have some people sad, you know, loved ones. You know, maybe they're traveling for a funeral. There's a lot of emotions that are going on there. And that path is being traveled every single day, right? So right. this could be just an imprint in time. And, and here's kind of the result of that is, is kind of what you're seeing. And you're saying that these could have been the residuals of numerous different flights yes. at numerous different times. Exactly. And like it's just a culmination of them. Yes. And to be clear, I would not classify this as a haunting so much as I would an imprint in time. So right. I don't think these are ghosts of people who died on a flight, although maybe they are. Maybe it's a flight that crashed and now they're just, you know, they now they live this motion every time. Um, but my personal belief in this one is that this is more so an imprint of people doing the same thing every single day over and over and over and over again. Yeah, that's weird. It is. That's an, really weird. It's an odd one. Uh, but, I had not caught that end until I, until it panned over. And I was like, what the fuck? Where are they coming from? And that's not like a gag you could pull very easily. Like, you can't do anything in an airport. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like someone was like, hey, everybody come here at night. We're going to pull a gag. Like, no, that's. There's yep. no way security would allow you to do that. So, And if you kind of know the way these, these work, those are the wheels. This literally goes, mm -hmm. and that's the end of it. Yeah. So if anyone was loading on a ladder, you'd see it on the other side. Um, but I also purposely had it really zoomed in so it looked like there, and then I let it zoom out. So I don't know, man. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. To be clear, I don't think these are ghosts, but I do think it's a residual kind of, I, I will say haunt in that sense. So you're saying it's not a ghost as in like the conscious thought. I don't think it's a ghost of anyone who died in that one spot. I think it's just an imprint in time just from doing the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, I gotcha. So I don't know, man. I don't know. What do you, what do you think of the, uh, any, I know it's, this is a tough one. It, it's a bit odd. <laughs> It's a touch odd. Like, I'm trying to think of any angle that that could be at. Because, like I said, you can't pull a prank at an airport. I mean, it would have to It would have to be one of the major, major heads of security that, that would have been like, all right, I'll let you guys do this this one time. But, uh, I mean, that's even a safety issue, to have a hatch open like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to have to say I have no clue what I'm looking at. <laughs> Good. Like that's that's the best I can I can that's, come up with on that. You you do have a lot of uh, some wingers tonight. <laughs> this is a good one. I like it. I like it. Whereas last week we're like, oh, it could be this, could be this. This one, it's like, oh shit. I think yeah, no, I, this I, is this is slimming it down. <laughs> I think I'm opening your mind a little bit. Well, my mind was never not open. Well, I, just, I mean, I'm I mean, I think I'm bringing from the pessimist. Yeah, but I think I'm bringing new concepts to you. 
Well, the first thing you always have to do with things like this, right? Because everything we're talking about is still, um, it's largely accepted as hypothetical. Ghosts mm -hmm. are largely accepted as hypothetical. Werewolves are largely accepted as hypothetical. So, so all of this has to be taken from that angle first. Right. You know, how, how many, how many common denominators can we take away until we say there is the chance that this is what we're claiming it is. So, yeah. So looking at this, I mean, it's not leaving much for you. Just like the plane that's just up there. Yeah. Like gravity, man. <laughs> a piece of paper would fucking fall. Like, how does something that heavy just stay? Exactly. It, it just it doesn't make any sense at all. Mm -hmm. and, so. and I don't know if we'll ever know the answer to this per se. You know, unless you eventually maybe I'm someone on that catwalk. I don't know. You think it's a catwalk? catwalk like a like a thingy or whatever the little the, i don't know what it's technically that called. could be the residual you find out that, that airport was built on top of a cemetery <laughs> that was built on top of a theater that used to do clothing it's just a bunch out. of models just walking down the yep the that's theater. right and they're just reliving that <laughs> okay. experience over and over again that's it debunked we got it they are ghosts they're just there you go. The model ghosts that's why they're so skinny but, but yeah it's definitely interesting yeah that one that one really has me a little confused yeah, and, and again, here's here's the thing, is they're not, and I'm going to add a couple layers to this. When you look at them, they're not necessarily walking per se. You're going to notice some of them are actually kind of gliding, like right here. Like, it's not it's it's not even like a normal pace. They're moving quickly. Yeah. But then again, it depends on the airport, right? JFK in New York used to okay, take a, move take, like fucking light. Like right here, though, look at, they're, like, they're almost gliding, though. I, I don't know, man, like. It's brisk. It's a brisk walk. <laughs> it's a brisk walk. Um, but yeah, man. So again, these are these are some good ones for you tonight. No, that's that's interesting. That's really interesting. So, um, but those were actually, you know what? I think we have time for one more. If you really want to dive into one more, yeah, we could do that. Okay, um, I'm here, man. All right. This is uh, this one's going to be a little bit of a doozy. Remember how I said uh, there was a video of a kid who took a selfie. Mm -hmm. And that selfie had the grandmother in it. Right. I have the documentary that that's from. So okay. Now, I couldn't find the isolated clip, so I actually had to find the the video. And I don't know if this is going to be in English. So that's how deep I had to dig on this one. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's see. It's not in English, so I'll break it down for you. But there's going to be an ad right here, so let me get that shit off. I don't want. They didn't pay to be here. All right. If I can find my mouse. Okay. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go full screen, and I'm going to kind of show this to you. What we're looking at. Oops. Is definitely not in English. So. Here's the story. Let me break this down for you. What happens is a little girl's taking a selfie. And then as like the mom goes and looks at the picture or whatever, they notice that the grandmother that had just recently passed away is in the background of the picture. Not only in the background, but kind of pokes their head in there. Here's, mm -hmm. here's what I want you to look at though. Okay. Um, it, it would be real easy to have someone like really poke their head in there and just say, oh, it's a ghost, right? You, it's almost impossible to, to disprove that. But what I want you to look at more so is the features of the grandma, which is, I think, where this is going to lend some credibility. So here we go. You're going to see little kid is going to be playing with a phone. Um, and then that's the grandmother. Oh, this gives me chills every time. So there's the kid. And then there's the there's the grandmother, but uh, I don't like looking at this. But what I want you to look at is the eyes, right? Like what living person have you seen with eyes like that? Okay. And and not only that, but the kid. You see the side of the face too, like next to the eyes. Yeah, but the other thing too is the kid doesn't really react to this in any way. Like the kid doesn't look up, doesn't do anything else. It's just kind of. Ugh, I don't like looking at that, man. And so, so that grandmother was not there. No, 
and they only noticed it when they looked back at the picture. And I think it was the mom that later got her phone back and watched the video and realized that. And that was either the grandmother or the grandfather. I think it's the grandmother that passed away a couple days before. Oh, man, I don't like looking at that. That is genuinely... That's, that gives me chills on my neck. And, and again, I go back to the eyes. And, and when we were talking about the ghost brides, remember how I said certain features I would look for would be the sunken in eyes, things like that. Right. Um, I don't, I don't know, man, this, this is one that's almost impossible to go and try to debunk. Cause it, you know, it could be set up, but I'm not thinking that it is. So I don't, I don't know Let how to see that one more time. Yeah, I got you. It's, it's right that's here. Really? But it looks so, oh, and she pops in. Yeah. Oh, start from the beginning again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so weird how, how she's not even there. And then she just comes into the picture. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> yeah, it's this one. Uh, it, this makes my hair stand up, especially when you get a good look and it's the eyes. It's, it's the eyes. There is no eye. Yeah. Yeah. But what country was this? Uh, this this was without sounding any kind of like it, it definitely a Spanish speaking could be Portugal or something like that. Portugal, whatever. Uh. But but again, the other thing I'm going to point out is the kid does not react. You'd think if someone was right there, he would at least look or, or do something. And it's not like he's trying to even put that person in the in the shot. Ah, uh, it, it, it's a tough one, man. It's uh, it, it, this one's a doozy. Ah, <laughs> uh, so what are your what are your thoughts on this, man? I know this is. Uh, I mean, it could, it could be completely fake. Who knows? It, I mean, this is this is a lot easier to set up than the other situations. And she didn't transparently just come into the picture. She popped in, like that looks like a a being. Right now, now there like there's are no transparency. There's no like, you know, it, it it fades in and fades out. Like there's no trick to it. It just came walking over, like it came right out of party fucking city, right after it fucking painted its eye out of its face. And ooh, but there is a little bit of an eye, uh, eye though. Like you can see, it looks demonic. Uh, yeah, I don't like jump into that, but it's. Uh, it's it's a creepy one. Um, it's unsettling. That's that's for damn sure. Um, now, like I I don't feel good watching it. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Oh. I told you that makes my hair stand up on the back of my neck too. Uh, but but again, when I, when we talk about this, uh, they're ghosts, and there are numerous times where people experience seeing ghosts in full, like just like I'm looking at you right now. The only difference is no response, man. and the number one thing you always hear is the eyes are always sunken in. So that's that's a common trend in in kind of that. So yeah, that does that doesn't look good. No. I, I didn't I didn't like that one all that much. Uh, yeah, and again, <laughs> remember the mom the mom. I mean, get, I like it, but the mom. Yeah, this one does make my hair stand up a little. But the mom gets the phone back, watches it, and then sees this, which again is the the grandmother that passed away like that same week. Or now that's all of the video. That's as long as it was. So they made a whole documentary on just this one this one clip. Um, but this this is the only clip because remember the kid was just playing with the phone, they got it back, they saw that, and then that was kind of. But I'm saying like that's the length of the video the kid took. Yes, yes, that was it. Yep, that was it. So uh, I don't know, man. One last time. Uh, it, I don't know. So when we talk theories on this, if it is the grandmother or or whoever. There's two ways to look at this. One, it's an unsettling image, which I think I don't think anyone's it's very gonna, unsettling. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to argue that. Now, I guess are we scared or are we comforted? You know, because it is the grandmother, right? Well, it doesn't look right. No, like there's a very big difference when people have out of body experiences or they have like near death experiences when something perceives itself as angelic at what something looks like that. Right, right. Now, don't get me wrong. It's it's scary in general. Like, if I was around at the time of Jesus and he fucking resurrected himself, I'd be like, holy fuck. <laughs> Who knows if he looked like that, you know? But, um, yeah, you generally, if you subscribe to this culture of thought, um, 
you know, you're the immediate assumption that certain things look demonic and other things don't. And yeah. that looks more on the demonic side. Yeah. Which doesn't doesn't leave me feeling too good about it. No. Well, and then now as a family, you have other questions. Okay, so why didn't this family member go to wherever? Heaven, the, the clouds, right. or whatever. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, it could leave more questions than it does answers. But that's that's the right. one I was talking about the other the other week that, that you were asking if I had the video. So, yes, I do have the video. That is awkward. I had to dig like, deep, man. That wasn't even an English documentary. <laughs> In the inner uh, But... All right, those are all the videos that I had tonight. Um, I thought there was some good ones, man. This was a this was a good episode, but oh yeah, mm-hmm. what did you? think? I think the weakest one was the guy. Oh, in, with in with the latch room. that that caught the no 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 not the latch. No, oh, that the was witch, interesting. The werewolf. I mean, very easy to set up, but the point that you brought up is that you know a lot of these things that are less fantastic, they kind of catch you, because because you realize that a lot of this stuff isn't fantastic, right? Or, or certain things like residual, like that would be a residual haunt, right? That would be whomever died or the ghost always opened the window, yeah. always opened the window, is continuing to open the window, you know? It, it could be intelligent, but you're right in this case, it's residual because if it's the same thing happening every night. Yeah, he predicted it. It Yeah, like it doesn't even know we're there. We, don't, we can see it. It doesn't acknowledge us. It just does its thing. Yeah. Uh, um, I, would, I would say that has, you know, there's something to look into on that. I would say that as far as the water, that can be a reflection. It could have been an illusion, but at the same time, there were no reflections anywhere else. Like, it was a very dense visual. And it seemed um, like a solid mass. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, the only one was the guy that was near the uh, near the glass. The one streaming the on Facebook. which The but, werewolf. But that did open our eyes to uh, Pepper's ghost, which I think is very important for people to know if they're going to be getting into this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, it's an interesting concept. Yeah. Um, But other than that, man, I thought it was good. Some good episodes. We saw some stuff that actually made our hair stand up a couple times. Um, (laughs) Definitely all of our Patreon subscribers, we thank you for subscribing. LaRocco, any closing thoughts on anything? Uh, Not that much. Just uh, can't wait to see the uh, next one. You you pull up some really interesting videos. I I really like doing these. Yeah. I I got some. I keep forgetting to show you the one where, like, uh, it's some people are saying it's a ghost. Some people are saying it's a UFO that flies into a car window and makes it crash into a tree. Um, I keep forgetting. Really? Sh- yeah, I keep forgetting to show you that one because it's not a YouTube video. I actually have to pull up the article and show you because the video okay. it, the video instantly gets taken down off of YouTube. Gotcha. So um, I, that will be the next episode. There you go. Good cliffhanger right there. Yeah. <laughs> but for everyone, we will see you next time on After Hour Comedy Declassified.